you mentioned you were in a plane crash and you broke your back. So mm. obviously that's got to be a very, very scary feeling because plane crash, there are not a, normally a whole lot of survivors. So what's going through your mind as the plane is starting to grow, go down? I don't remember anything. When the second engine shut down, we were 6,000 feet. And I don't remember. The first thing I remember is back then they were putting this. You remember the, the ambulances? Like, yeah. Where they were, not, were racks, not right. not the luxury back right. like yeah. today, right? Mm -hmm. I, I just remember them saying, I think we might lose this one. And that and, was you? I, I thought they were talking about me. No, oh. it wasn't me. It was it was um, the, the pilot that eventually died. Okay. Yeah. But we, I, you know, we couldn't talk. And I woke up and, but the funny thing is I was wrestling Wahoo that night and we we're talking about the kayfabe, right? Mm -hmm. Wahoo and I were, were, rest, were a big angle and Va Johnny Valentine and Tim Woods were. Okay. Well, Woods walked out of it. And by God, he went He went to the show. We, the territory would have died. They'd all fallen out we were in that plane together. And and Wahoo, when Wahoo came in, they just, this is all, this is the woman where Mike's from, right? Mm -hmm. When Wahoo came into the hospital, he came in running. And it scared him, but they thought he was coming in to beat me up. Right. Because what, what had happened is I had hit him with a, with a table leg and at the angle we shot. Right. And a, a nail, the table leg didn't break right. Right. And I hit him with a nail, put 40 stitches in his head. Wow. So, and they play and all that. And they, and the hospital was scared. They called the cops. <laughs> he was coming to see if I was okay. Right. I lay on a metal table and said, boy, all right. And you know, he was right. Right. Well, he ran hard, man. I read on the, where you switched seats. No. That didn't, that didn't happen? No. No, no, no. As a matter of fact, yeah, I did want to, I did want to, I like sitting in the front seat. Right. Uh, but Johnny wanted, and I, Johnny is senior. But had you not been in, had you been in that seat, could the outcome have been different? Oh, entirely. They, they, they pulled John, well, John didn't have a seatbelt on. Right. right. So John, they pulled John up right here, right? Um, pulls his arms out of the dashboard. Wow. Like this. And of course the pilot ate the steering wheel. Right. And you said the pilot ended up dying. Yeah, a year, a year later. Right. So how was, how severe was, was John, John? Paralyzed. They, they just, they, they couldn't treat people in Wilmington. Right. And by the time they, they flew him in a military plane, he and Bob Bruggers to uh, Houston. Mm -hmm. But by the time they got there with, yeah, that, that kind of stuff needs to be treated right immediately. Away. Yes, yeah. yes. You. So, what was what was your recovery? So, how long? I, you, went, I went from two fifty five to one eighty, and they first of all, first of all, they said I wouldn't wrestle again, and then um, six months later, the doctor said there's something wrong. It's kind of like. Did the thought of not wrestling again ever cross your mind? Yes. Yeah. Was that the first and only time that the thought of wrestling might not happen again crossed your mind? Have there ever been any other injury or any other situation in which you say, you know what, there's a chance I don't wrestle again? No, that was a B. Everything else I must is fixable. Rotator cuffs, Jim Andrews, you know, everybody knows that Jim Andrews, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Um, yeah, he, Jim used to say to me, every time I work on you, it's like putting a piece together, an old, like putting a piece of old leather together. Right. Because my Terry said it was the size of a quarter on both my rotators. Wow. Because I waited so long to do it. So now you, you, you survive that. You come out, nobody can tell that you went through this, this tragic injury. Mm -hmm. Did you not? Did you feel different? Did anything about you? Did you change the way you wrestled? Did no, you change anything? No, it just took me a long time to, to land on my back. Right. And I used to remember there was no payphone, no no cell phones back then. I, right. I would call the doctor at home on the payphone. Right. In the lobby, people going, "Hey, woo, Rick Flair, right?" I'm going, Doctor Johnson, you sure I can do this? He said, "There's only one way to find out." Right. I can't guarantee everything. <laughs> I would call him every day. But when you did, but when you, when you fell, when they threw you, slammed you on your back, or you fell on your back for the first time, and you like, okay, yeah, I'm okay. You know, that actually, I was okay with that. The hardest thing was going into the turnbuckle. Yeah, 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 hard, boom. yeah, and I mean, and then like taking a backdrop. So George Scott, the unsympathetic guy that he was, 
He made me wrestle an hour every night in 1976 until I took a backdrop. That's, right. where, that's where the guy throws you in, right? Right. And lifts you up. Lip, and you flip it, yeah. yeah. So finally one night I said, I'm not doing another hour. <laughs> not in front of 200 people in Farm Farmville, uh, Virginia. Right. So I took it. I was fine. But it, it's like everything else. You got you to gotta try it out. You lost weight. You took the insurance settlement. Did you say? Did you take the insurance settlement and and, and bought a caddy? Yep. <laughs> Blue Coupe de Ville. Coupe de Ville. Yeah. Did did the did you need to get the caddy to be part of the persona to be the nature boy to exactly. be Rick? Flair? It exactly. had to be a caddy. Yeah, Dusty Rhodes. You only come through one time. Why not pass by in a Cadillac? <laughs> <laughs> so did you did you drive that car from city from yeah. location to location? Mm -hmm. Wow! So it's not like it is now because these guys now do they do they still wrestle like you guys? They don't do it like they like you guys did it. Do they? Did they wrestle in small cities and yeah? They don't, no, no they're, but they're much more sophisticated. But they they still work. Like my daughter's schedule, she'll wrestle 155 matches. Right. And then if you're on top now, the difference for us. Is if you're on top in in our business now, even on your days off, you're doing media. Yeah, you're doing promotion all, yeah. all day long. Right. Radio. I mean, it's not like you ever have time off. Right. So okay. because when you had to, you had the belt, you still had to wrestle. He still had your obligations, although they weren't like what they are now. Yeah. But you still, like you said, you was wrestling twice on Sunday, twice on Monday, and you probably had a couple of gigs on Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, of course I did. And I didn't one one year, uh, well, actually three years, but one year, the, the most I ever wrestled was 425 times in one year. 425? In one year. There's only 365 days. I know, I'm talking about twice on Saturday. Yes. On Saturday, yeah. yeah. So what did your body feel like? It, 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 it never bothered me. But you didn't know any better? No. Do you think there's someone that wrestled more in a calendar year than what you did that 425? Um, I doubt that, but I, I'm, 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 yep, I'm pretty sure I've wrestled more because I, here's my deal. I, I, I tell people this and they just can't believe it. I was in Melbourne or in, um, Sydney one hour, right? Right. Flew to Auckland. Right. One hour. Right. Mm -hmm. Flew to Christchurch. Right. Mm -hmm. One hour. Flew to, um, St. Louis one hour with Harley Race. Right. Flew to Atlanta. One hour with Dusty Rhodes right. and took off for Tokyo. Wow. <laughs> one week. In one week. So that's that's a lot 20 of 20 plus thousand miles. That's a lot of drinking. <laughs> <laughs>